this tool is useful for. Okay, thank you. Well, hi everyone. So I've been introduced, so I have to say my name again. It's nice. <laughs> um, I've been here uh, last year and I introduced Open Nebula. So I changed a bit the, um, the presentation so I give more an uh, insight of Open Nebula from uh, different perspectives. Uh, from the uh, consumer point of view, the um, cloud integrator point of view, and also from the cloud administrator. So, <coughs> what is Open Nebula? Okay. So, um, if you want to use virtualization or cloud technologies, it's because you're looking a way to um, flexibilize your service, right? To make them uh, elastic. So um, at the beginning, you can think, okay, I'm, I'm going to decide for a hypervisor technology, and why do I need uh, a virtualization manager? Well, what is all that about? Well, uh, you obviously, if you have a um, small number of VMs, you can you can decide that, um, okay, I'm going to handle those manually. I'm going to um, have an Excel spreadsheet saying, okay, this VM is in this host, and it does have this IP, and it's using these disks, and so on. But uh, that doesn't scale. I mean, if uh, you are trying to run a big cloud in a large number of uh, physical hosts, then you will need something to take care of those uh, details for you. So what are those details? Well, um, as I said, what, where do I put my VM? What's the best uh, available physical host where my VM is going to fit and it's going to perform right? Okay, so that will be a scheduling. For a scheduling, you also need information about the state of your physical infrastructure, so you need to monitor that. Okay, so Open Nebula also does that for you. Also, how do I provision a new VM? Where do I get the images from? Where are they living? Uh, how do I fit information to that VM? Well, that will be image management and also contextualization of the VM. And again, Open Nebula gives you means to do that in an automatic, um, even graphical way. Um, also, you may be interested in offering uh, your cloud uh, to other people. So, how do I manage uh, the users? How do I manage the roles? Uh, can I create groups? Well, you get the user management. Also, um, what if I want to create uh, new disks? How do I do that? You need some kind of storage management as well. Um, again, you may want uh, your VMs to be completely isolated, but uh, in most of cases, you will want to have uh, some kind of networking. Uh, how do I handle that? Uh, can I put VLAN tagging on my VMs? Um, how do I do that? Well, again, you need a virtualization manager. Um, do I want to use more than one hypervisor? Uh, if so, uh, which ones are supported? Well, uh, we'll talk a bit about that afterwards. And of course, you want to manage all that through a clean interface, or maybe you want to do some scripting to um, automate some common tasks. Well, um, Open Nebula offers a, a wide range of APIs for uh, public and also private clouds and uh, two different or three different interfaces, uh, two of them graphical and, all, and uh, I think very comprehensive and complete uh, command line interface to manage all the resources that are available on a cloud infrastructure. Okay, so if we combine all of this together, uh, we got a uniform management layer that orchestrates multiple technologies to form basically build clouds. And that's uh, what we call the uh, Open Nebula project. Okay, so what do I say that um, Open Nebula is a solution to uh, build clouds? Well, it's a solution to build clouds and also it's a solution to virtualize data centers. Uh, the philosophy behind Open Nebula is not that um, you should shape your uh, physical infrastructure ar around a virtualization manager, but rather the virtualization manager should be able to shape itself to integrate with uh, existing technologies you have in your data center. I mean, we know that each data center is a completely different world, different technologies, different uh, hardware layouts. Uh, how do I 
deal with that with a completely closed product? Well, the answer is that you cannot. You need something that is more like a toolkit. Um, but the thing about that is that it's, it's not a closed product. So if you download Open Nebula and you try to um, build a cloud in like five minutes, it's going to be tricky. You will need to fine tune different uh, components, uh, different plugins. Uh, everything of Nebula tends to be modular and plugin oriented. So at the end of the day, you have like little scripts that do little actions for for a specific technology. More or less, how the um, Unix philosophy is: small commands for small tasks. Okay, so with Open Nebula you can build a private cloud if it's uh, only about your data center or physical infrastructure not being devoted to external users. You can turn this into a hybrid cloud in, if you use uh, some of the Open Nebula um, hybrid cloud uh, adapters to be able to interface with uh, public cloud services like Amazon or like Elastic Hosts. And if you activate uh, one of the um, several uh, pub public uh, interfaces, you can get a public cloud and you can shell your physical infrastructure or offer your physical infrastructure to external users in a controlled way, not offering details about your infrastructure that you may not want to disclose. Um, so Benebula is a fully open source project. It's uh, based on the Apache license, which is very unrestrictive. It's made to be interoperable with different technologies, uh, also kind of um, based on standards. So we always try to not to make up some uh, some APIs or, or whatever. We always try to find whatever is there, whatever people use it, and, and plug it in. Um, tends to be infrastructure agnostic, so um, at least the core is. I mean, the specific drivers are talking with specific technologies, but for the core, everything is like an abstraction. So you can really say that um, that will foster the integration with new components. It's also a proven technology, meaning that it's been around for, I think, four or five years now. It's been used uh, a lot for with uh, big deployments, which uh, kind of prove that it's scalable at least if you have the configuration right. And also it's flexible uh, in terms of integration with new technologies. So, okay. um, so what is Open Nebula for different, um, for, for different um, stakeholders of the cloud? Well, uh, you can have uh, three big uh, types of people that uh, will be interested in Open Nebula. Um, Probably the uh, the less interested would be the cloud consumer, but uh, they are the end users of the cloud. The one that uses Open Nebula just to get uh, raw computer power out of uh, any infrastructure. So you got the end user. You also have the cloud provider, which is the one that uh, enables uh, the infrastructure to uh, be cloud-like and offer that to external users or internal. And you've got the cloud integrator, which is um, someone that's trying to build um, cloud solutions, and it, it may um, want to integrate Open Nebula with uh, some other technologies, like some billing platform or any other hypervisor, uh, any storage backend that is not currently integrated, you name it. Okay, so from the cloud consumer perspective, from the uh, end user perspective, uh, the guy that is going to use the cloud, um, what are the components, what are the, the, um, the, the managers that it's, uh, he's looking for? Well, he will probably need to do some, uh, well, obviously need to do some kind of uh, virtualization management, like for instance, uh, he will like to manage the complete life cycle of a virtual machine, meaning being able to launch it, stop it, suspend it, shut it down, migrate it, 
Although, well, migration will be just for private, private cloud. It doesn't make sense uh, in a public cloud interface to have a migration. He would like to maintain a catalog of, of templates of VMs so he can keep track of the, um, of the different uh, VM configurations he has. He also may want to use contextualization to fit some data into the virtual machine, which is um, it's always uh, a tricky thing to do because um, from the OpenEvola perspective, all the virtual machines are like black boxes. Uh, but Nebula doesn't want to mess what's inside your VM, primarily because it's really difficult to support all the varieties of uh, guest operating systems that you can have. And uh, for Unix, Linux, we might be okay, but when we get to Windows, we don't have the expertise. So we don't get, want to get inside the VM. We just want to be able to feed it data, and then it's up to the user when the VM is booted to make use of that data or not. Okay, so that's from the virtual virtualization management point of view. A uh, user may want also to do some storage management, so he will want to have a, a catalog of images um, where he can use to um, build uh, virtual machines out of. Um, he will want to prepare the virtual machine, I mean the images themselves, and then probably upload it, or maybe even he wants to use one of the predefined uh, golden images that the, the cloud administrator may have prepared for him so that the predefined appliances. And he may want to use, um, apart from operating systems, some other kind of images like data blocks and making them persistent. So the next time he boots a VM with the same data block, he will have this information available. He will want that all that to be managed for themselves. He will expect that anyway. OK. Um, he will also maybe want to keep track of of uh, how much uh, computer power and, and capacity he is using. So he may want to have some sort of accounting information available, ideally from a graphical um, uh, form. And he may also want to, well, he will obviously want to have uh, some kind of debugging mechanisms. If the VM is not booting or is not getting uh, the correct network interface, I want to be able to know why. So he may want to have uh, some kind of uh, BNC connection directly to the, to, the, um, to the virtual machine. And once it's up and running, he may want to do an SSH connection or a remote desktop connection if it's a Windows machine. Uh, what else? He will want to have some network management. He will need his VM to, to be able to connect between them or to the internet. So he will need them. Um, kind of a manager of a network catalog. He will need probably to assign some uh, public or elastic IPs to his virtual machine. He also may want to have uh, the virtual machines completely isolated from other users. So he will, the, the model will be to have a, a cloud that allows uh, multi-tenancy, so multiple users can use the same infrastructure but in a completely isolated way, so they don't see each other, they don't bump into each other. And he may also want to set some uh, firewall rules. So, OK, this virtual machine is going to be accessible from port 22 and, and nothing else. OK, so <coughs> how, how can he manage uh, all of this? What are the available uh, interfaces that uh, uh, the user will be able to use to, to manage these different aspects of, uh, of uh, a class infrastructure. Well, in Open Nebula, he can uh, decide between uh, three different uh, interfaces. One of them is the um, it's a subset, really. It's not a complete Amazon Web Services interface. I'm referring here to just uh, EC2. But he may, if he has um, already some um, applications that make use of this interface, he doesn't have to port it. Uh, somewhere else, if he wants to use an Open Nebula based cloud, he he can use the Amazon EC2 interface, and that's uh, the factor standard in, in cloud computing nowadays. Also, he can use uh, one of the recommended standards by the Open Grid Forum, that is the uh, Open Cloud Computing Interface (OCCI), which is uh, I think m much more powerful than the Amazon EC2 because it allows you to um, manage. Um, <clears throat> more resources than the Amazon EC2. So you can define uh, networks, you can um, 
you can uh, manage all the um, all the images and with more I would say more detail that the Amazon interface offers. And on top of this OCCI, I mean, both of them are, um, are services that are managed through the common line. But on top of OCCI, uh, Open Nebula offers uh, the Open Nebula self-service portal, which offers the basic functionality a user should expect from a cloud, basically. Managing images, managing networks, and managing virtual machines. That's it. I mean, completely hides all the details of the infrastructure. It doesn't show any physical hosts, or user doesn't have to care about uh, what software breaches are mounted in, in each host, or what are the uh, data stores where the images are pulled from. He doesn't care about that. He, he needs some abstraction. And the Open Nebula Self Service offers um, means to do that. Um, OK, so that was the user perspective. What's the cloud provider perspective? Uh, cloud provider, you can think of a cloud provider as the cloud administrator, the one that uh, enables his, his infrastructure to be able to use, um, to be used in a cloud-like fashion. OK, so um, what are the main components to build that infrastructure? Um, well, we got it there visually. Let's let's go through them. You will want to have a, a sort of front end a, a access point to the cloud, and he will be he will need to be able to manage things like authentication and authorization of the users. He he doesn't want everyone to come here and and just use all the computer power he has. No, he wants to be able to control that uh, using uh, some kind of groups or access control lists or roles. He also will need some form of accounting if he wants to to keep track of who is using what. Obviously, some logging if something goes wrong, if there's uh, some intrusion or whatever, he will need to have uh, somewhere where all the events are locked in, in files or any other way. And he will also be interested in, in set some kind of uh, quotas. So just restrict the access to users, saying, OK, you just have uh, access to two CPUs and four gigs of RAM for this uh, week. So he will be able, he, he need to set that kind of quotas, that kind of rules. Um, he also needs uh, to, to have uh, physical hosts. <laughs> he needs to have the servers, the, the capacity. He may want to use different hypervisors for different reasons. He may want to use VMware, he may want to use Oracle, Hyper-V, whatever. So um, Open Nebula out of the box just uh, manages, I mean, natively manages KVM, Sheng, and VMware. But if you go to the um, Open Nebula ecosystem, which is um, projects that are hosted but are not really inside the main distribution, you can find the prototype drivers for Shen Server, for Hyper-V, Bitworks, I think, um, a number of others. With one, one instance of Open Nebula, he will be able to manage up to 500 hosts. This, um, these numbers came out of uh, some testing made out by um, by the CERN, which uh, managed to to deploy 16,000 VMs in 500 hosts. Um, and Open Nebula didn't crash. That was the good news. <laughs> um, he will also want to have some form of automatic failover and, and high availability. He doesn't want um, the front end of Open Nebula crashing and so the cloud going astray. He doesn't want to have one physical host down and all the VMs on that host to disappear completely and not having automatic means to launch those VMs again in another host. <coughs> And uh, he will need to have some kind of automatic resource allocation, meaning scheduling. He will need Open Nebula to be able to say, OK, this VM has this capacity, this host has this capacity, it's the best fit, so I'll send it to it. And also, he will need to manage uh, resource pools of the different resources that conform a cloud. <clears throat> OK, he will need to have uh, some kind of uh, service networks as well for monitoring and control, to performing live migration, to access the storage servers, which uh, bring us to the data stores, which are 
places where the images reside, right? Uh, where they are pulled from uh, by Open Nebula and staged into the host where the virtual machine is going to boot. So um, he may want to use multiple data stores. Uh, he may have uh, heterogeneous configurations. Uh, he may want to use shared file system or not. Um, so as you see, um, these are the, the basic blocks, but uh, they are source of heterogeneity. I mean, there's uh, lots of possible combinations. And um, what the Open Nebula philosophy is about is not, not closing doors, not saying, OK, you just have to use what, uh, what this implements, but um, try to be more flexible, which makes it more difficult to configure, but I guess a bit powerful as well. OK, so this, OK, <laughs> looks a lot like the one before, right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, maybe um, the difference is uh, what's being supported by Open Nebula right now. OK, so for instance, networks, we have uh, VLANs, uh, so you can do some kind of traffic shaping at layer two. Uh, we also support uh, open with switch and uh, EV tables. In the front end, for authorization purposes, uh, you can use for the uh, user authorization and um, authentication the certificates X509. You can use LDAP servers, so you don't have to um, you don't have to map your users in in, in your enterprise to to Open Nebula users, but uh, that that mapping will be made automatically if you use. Uh, if you use a LDAP server or you use any other form of authorization that you want to integrate with, uh, the scripts for authorization are quite easily so made. So you can maybe think about doing some for yourself to, I don't know, connect to Kerberos or things like that. So out of the box, we have uh, certificates, LDAP, and also SSH keys. So you can authenticate your users by those means. You set ACL, you can set ACL rows or groups. Uh, uh, for the users, you can use, yeah, as I said, VMware and Sheng and KVM as the hypervisor. And uh, for monetization, you can use Ganglia or you can use Nagios. Um, or you can use uh, just what Open Nebula offers, which are simple probes that through SSH goes to the host and retrieve information of the host. It's not as scalable as maybe one of those other solutions, but if your cloud is mid site, you'll you'll be good to go with that. Uh, for the data stores and the transmission of uh, images to the, from, the, from, the dat from the servers to the, to the hosts, you can use um, distributed file systems as NFS, which is uh, maybe not the best option. You can use ClusterFS as well. Uh, you can use CSCASI and LVM uh, to automatic provision without um, transferring images, but rather through Ethernet CSCASI. Um, and you can use some other means like, uh, well, SSH, which is the, um, the, the out-of-the-box solution, and also some others that are living in the ecosystem, like, for instance, BitTorrent, to, to fastly distribute the, um, your, your images. This is especially good if you have to distribute the same image across different, um, across different hosts and you don't want to use any distributed file system, which at the end of the day always acts like a bit of a bottleneck. OK. <coughs> so also from the cloud provider perspective, uh, it would be interesting to kind of group together the physical resources by similar characteristics, right? So maybe, maybe someone has, um, I don't know, a group of uh, physical hosts that are really, really, really well connected by um, a really good uh, network layout. And then you have another host that are not that good connected, but they have a lot of storage. OK, so you may be, you want to cluster those in fast network cluster and the big data cluster, right? Uh, so with Open Nebula, you can, you can do this kind of stuff. And you can um, um, uh, build or, or tune the scheduling policies to, to honor that. 
You can even tell the user, well, you have these clusters available and uh, you can choose where your VM goes just by setting uh, one, one, one option in your, in your VM template. Uh, this can be used for load balancing, also for high availability and high performance computing or means to, to squeeze the most out of those. Um, also, you can have multiple data stores per cluster. This is, a, this is a new feature, really. I mean, this is just available in the latest version, which is 3.4, and it allows you to balance input-output operations between different storage servers, which is, uh, I guess, interesting. And, well, you can define different SLAs, for backups, and performance features for different virtual machines or, or different users. Okay, um, one of the interesting things you can do with Open Nebula is uh, managing different Open Nebula instances. So from the cloud provider perspective, this can be really useful. He wants to uh, have a centralized way to manage different clouds that live in different administrative domains. He can use the uh, Ozone server. Um, and Ozone is an Open Nebula zone, meaning it's an Open Nebula instance. Um, what is that? What, what an Open Nebula zone server offers is uh, ways to decouple um, the access to the different um, clouds, right? So he, he can, I mean, it can, uh, in a way, um, what it does is proxy in the requests to different, uh, to different clouds. Uh, when you add that zone inside um, the Ozone server, uh, you have to give uh, the, the root credentials of the Open Nebula installation. And once you got that, you can define uh, virtual data centers within an Open Nebula zone, meaning that you can um, pick a subset of resources and build a virtual data center that will be offered to, uh, to, to the end user. So the end user will be able to log in through the graphical user interface that offers Open Nebula. And he will not connect directly to, to any of these zones, but rather he will connect to, to an also server that will be reverse proxying his petitions so all the um, all the details, even the location of the of the cloud, will be hidden for, from the user. You have a centralized, as I said, way of controlling all these resources using the um, the uh, the portal or also the command line interface that also comes with the uh, with the Open Nebula distribution to manage the Ozone servers. It allows to do some kind of uh, kind of raw federation of clouds. I mean. You are not getting means to live migrate a virtual machine between zones, or you're not getting uh, automatic um, translation of uh, of images between between two sites. But uh, you get a really nice way to do multi-tenancy and to um, manage subset of resources and offer them to to the end users. You also have isolation of these virtual data centers. So basically, when you create a virtual data center, you, you get the figure of the virtual data center administrator who is able to create new users just inside the virtual data center with just access to a subset of the resources that you define when you define the virtual data center. So they cannot get out of that. Um, and also gives you yeah, management of, of multiple sites in a multi-tier architecture. So this is uh, more or less what it looks like. The, the architecture of, a, of, a, of the Ozone server is, is depicted here. We basically have uh, two pools, one pool of zones and one pool of BDCs. And on top of that lives a, a red server, a very simple red server that uh, you can interface using command line interface or, or a graphical user interface. So what you, what you can do is, is add different zones. These are like open nebula instances and the pool of resources is managing. So here you can see that uh, this zone, for instance, has two clusters. When I define a virtual data center, I divide this cluster in a further subset. So this will be the resources accessible by, the, uh, by those users. He will be able to use only these uh, BDC blue resources. As you can see you have the figure of the BDC admin that is the one that uh, kind of uh, creates the networks and creates the images for the users and gives them rights to, to use them or not. 
And then you have the figure of the cloud admin that is the one that controls really the resources in, in this site. He, he can, I mean, he, if he's fed up with the awesome um, administrator, he can just change the password and that would be it. This is um, kind of a typical uh, scenario in large organizations and cloud providers. Uh, this kind of uh, tries to mimic the functionality offered by uh, other products like uh, VDirector, I think it's called, and offers the, uh, the MAN provision of fully configurable and isolated virtual data centers with full control and capacity to administer its users and also the resources. So, yeah, this is, uh, you can think of it of a, a product to manage different instances of Pernebula in a centralized way. Okay, uh, so what else a cloud administrator may want to do? He may want to be able to grow beyond the capacity of uh, his physical infrastructure, right? So if he's, um, if he's um, offering his infrastructure to users and he noticed that he cannot cope with that, he may want to be able to grow in a public class cloud provider like, for instance, Amazon EC2. Um, this is what is being called uh, cloud bursting and it allows uh, the cloud administrator to cope with peak uh, fluctuating demands of, uh, of, of infrastructure. Um, this is uh, this is not uh, maybe the um, the perfect hybrid cloud because um, Open Nebula will be able to launch and manage the lifecycle of virtual machines, but uh, it's not uh, yet able to to upload the image, uh, transform the image that is working in the local infrastructure and upload it to Amazon EC2 and expect that everything is going to work as if it's in local. So some previous work needs to be done. For instance, one of the use cases we have for hybrid cloud is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, SunGrid Engine, which is basically a cluster batch processing um, software that is able to, to manage a, a, a cluster of worker nodes to basically calculate um, HPC things like well, anything really. So uh, the use case was to have uh, the master node of the SunGrid engine running here locally with some slaves and having some um, service manager uh, just monitoring the load of this uh, SunGrid engine. So when, when it realizes that the physical infrastructure cannot cope with the new demand, uh, he, he, uh, Pernebula just launches some um, pre-configured images in Amazon. These images are contextualized by Open Nebula, so they are able to call home, right? So they, they are able to do a, a VPN connection to, to the master node in, of the SunGrid engine and enroll to it and saying, okay, I'm here, I'm able to, to, do some to do some work as if it was in the same LAN, but obviously it's not. I'm saying this is not the perfect solution because the latencies are, are really high. So but um, there's not really uh, any way around that. So it can, it can be useful for some cases, but um, it, it's, not, uh, it's not for every service, really. Okay, so uh, how does the uh, cloud uh, provider um, interact with its, own, with its own infrastructure? Well, he has a... He has uh, also uh, several choices. He can use a command line interface uh, as, mm, that are small, small programs to manage the different resources offered by Open Nebula. So you can have one VM that controls the life cycle of the VM. You can have one host that is going to be used to add physical host to the infrastructure and a number of others. Oh, the cloud pro provider can say, okay, I don't like the command line interface. So let's go for something graphical so you can get the Open Nebula Sandstone, which is um, is um, is as powerful as powerful as the command line, meaning that it gives you access to all the resources in your infrastructure, being that physical or, or virtual resources. So you can um, manage all the aspects of the infrastructure from a from a web browser. 
Um, you can also choose to have uh, some custom-made scripts to be able to automate the common tasks. So he may want to look into the XML RPC, which is the native uh, API offered by Open Nebula, or he may want to use some higher level API like the Open Nebula Cloud uh, API, which has been used now, I think, for, for Ruby, Java, and Python, and offers uh, some, some mechanisms that maybe with the XML RPC are, are more uh, cumbersome to do. Okay, so let's move to the um, the cloud integrator perspective. So, what's the, the cloud integrator? Um, what's the cloud integrator expecting from from a component like Open Nebula? So, if you think about a cloud integrator, as someone that wants to uh, to to um, build a cloud solution. With uh, with more functionality than what Open Nebula offers, maybe he wants to to uh, offer a combined uh, um, solution with also um, some other storage or some other billing platform or, or whatever else. What he will expect from from Open Nebula to be easily integrated with? Well, he will expect to be truly open. So with Open Nebula, you get Apache license to. You, you expect it to be very adaptable, so very modular and extensible. You can see here, this is uh, a peek on the, uh, on the architecture of Open Nebula. You can see how everything is, is really modular. So you have a core, which only works on abstractions. On top of that, you have the XML RPC API. That is the one that uses the scheduler, which, as you can see, it's another component. So it's a different process completely that just gets information from the core and, and make the scheduling decisions. Um, on top of the Open Nebula Cloud API, uh, um, you can interface that using the command line interface, some graphical user interface, and also the cloud servers like the OCCI and the Amazon EC2. Uh, and the interesting part is underneath. So that's uh, how you access Open Nebula and what, what Open Nebula does with the different resources are also, um, um, I mean, the tasks are carried out by uh, by little, oh, but by plugins, right? So the core just uh, talks with different processes using a simple Rusty protocol, and um, well, he he calls that to make uh, monitoring of the physical host and also the, the virtual the virtual resources. He calls uh, one of those as well to be able to launch a machine and to stop it with different uh, hypervisors. So, for instance, if uh, Open Nebula wants to shut down a machine, he will tell the driver, OK, shut down this machine. And the driver will say, OK, uh, this machine is running on KVM. OK, I'll call the KVM script. That's more or less how it works. And then you go into the KVM script, and it's a really simple script that you can change, uh, modify. It's Probably the KVM one is written in shell script, but you can write it in Ruby, in Ruby and you can extend it. And well, it's uh, it's really really modular. And you got the same for any other aspect like storage, storage, the transfer of images, uh, the networking, and also the authorization. So you can build uh, and modify maybe the I don't know the LDAP authorization module to be able to cope with groups, which now it doesn't. So that would be. That will be a task that you can do without having a knowledge of all the Open Nebula core and the complexity you might have. You, you will have just to modify a simple script with a really simple um, interface, it's basically uh, maybe a couple of parameters and, and a really simple answer. If you do that, then you can integrate that with Open Nebula because it's going to understand it completely. And well, also, uh, you can see here the, the database, which is Basically, something that handles the persistency. So, if the Open Nebula host crashes or, or the Open Nebula daemon crashes, you can launch it, and he will be able to interface all the running virtual machines, and they won't be disrupted. Okay, so this is uh, these are the um, the, um, the features that Open Nebula offers for for cloud integrators, right? So, as I said, he offers uh, different interfaces. Um, he may want to, to integrate Open Nebula with uh, different accounting and billing platforms. He may want to use a new sales service portal or customize the one that comes with. Uh, he may want to tune the hypervisor interaction. 
or he will, may want to develop new drivers for, for new hypervisors. Um, he may want to try some new hybrid configurations with different cloud providers not currently supported. He may want to try out new information systems, like he may want Nagios or Ganglia, and he may want to integrate with something else. He may want to also extend the monitoring probes that OpenEBOLA has to take into account some other factors like, I don't know, the temperature of the CPUs that are running uh, in the physical uh, infrastructure. Uh, he may want also to integrate with some other uh, SAN or NAS solutions to tune the storage operations to fit, uh, to fit more um, some kind of, uh, of infrastructure configuration. He may want to use uh, external repositories to, like, uh, uh, appliance marketplace, for instance. Um, he may want to integrate the um, authorization mechanism with new, um, with new systems, like, for instance, Active Directory, or to tune ACLs, or to custom, in general, authentication. So what OpenNebula offers for this is an, uh, an architecture that is modular and also uh, documentation on, on how to um, develop new integrations for Open Nebula. Okay, so also from the cloud integrator perspective, uh, it, it can be interesting to have a, a look into the ecosystem to see uh, what uh, different um, integrations have been done by other people and contributed back in in the form of, of, of ecosystem. So these projects are hosted. In, in in Open Nebula, but they are not controlled by by Open Nebula, by the Open Nebula people. They are um, they can have different licenses. They can well, pretty much uh, it's up to the uh, to the author of the uh, of the software to do whatever that he likes with it. Um, you can see that uh, even in the ecosystem, there's a clear focus on, on standards, right? So um, thanks to, uh, to to other to third parties, OpenNebula can be accessed uh, with uh, with uh, different formats like maybe OVF or or can manage um, also uh, storage that are offered with using the uh, CDMI or, or it, you can even interface uh, OpenNebula using the vCloud uh, interface from from VMware. Uh, you can also see that uh, there's adapters to 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 be able to um, interface with other uh, cloud providers like uh, Delta Cloud, which offers a wide range of uh, interfaces to, from Amazon EC2 to, to, I think, Rackspace and, and lots of others. Uh, it's also integrated with uh, G Clouds and Leaf Cloud. So those are different mechanisms that are available in the ecosystem to access Open Nebula in different ways that may be interested for, for the cloud integrator. Um, also, not directly supported, but um, but uh, hosted in Open Nebula and compatible with it. You can find some virtualization drivers like um, the Zen Cloud Platform, Hyper-V, OpenVisit, and and also uh, a Delta Cloud adapter. So you can not only interface Open Nebula with Delta Cloud, but you can use Delta Cloud to access other um, other infrastructures. You can also um, find uh, some examples of integration with uh, configuration um, tools like CF Engine, Puppet, and Chef, and uh, solutions to uh, integrate Open Nebula with um, other storage uh, backends, like, for instance, the Swift one of OpenStack or BitTorrent as well, it can be, can be used. OK, so subbrief. Uh, Pick on the Open Nebula history. Um, uh, it started uh, with a DSA research group uh, in 2005, starting uh, to, to to research on virtualization technologies. And three years later, um, the first technology preview of Open Nebula got out. So, talking about four years ago. And uh, in the middle of that year, uh, the first uh, stable version got out and from that from there um, we try to push it into the main Linux distribution so nowadays uh, version 3.4 will be available in Fedora 17 and in OpenSUSE, Debian, Ubuntu and we are trying to push uh, also into into the Apple repository. 
Um, somewhere around the middle of uh, 2010, a company, a spin-off, uh, was born. It's called C12G Labs that offers commercial support for uh, Open Nebula. So what you got from the community is a best effort mailing list. What you got from C12G is uh, engineers that can customize uh, your Open Nebula installation and also offers uh, a ticketing support system uh, with SLAs. Okay. Oh, well, it's interesting to know the European funding of the project. Uh, it started as a um, it started as an outcome of a project called Reservoir, which was a, a European flagship project with uh, I think 17 partners and and a lot of money to be f to fund. And uh, from there, it's a tool that it's used in in a lot of uh, European projects as well. But I think I have uh, some slides on that. So this is a bit of a numbers on on the health of the of the community. It's uh, it's it's good to to note. I think it's good for Open Nebula to note that uh, uh, since it, the project started, uh, the interest is growing all the time, right? So we we got more than double of uh, annual growth each year regarding um, the downloads of the software, which. Uh, a, go a good indicator, also the site visits, and um, the mailing list, which is uh, it's a big effort to maintain, but uh, if, you, if you have an open source project and you want to foster adoption, you, uh, you have to be very careful with that. I think we have, as I said, there are 800 registered users, which are, I guess, uh, a good mailing list, uh, especially if you look at how much we're spending in marketing, which is none. <laughs> Okay. So who who uses Open Nebula? Well, Open Nebula can be seen as a as a cloud enabler in the ICT industry. It is not just meant for for it's just not just meant for the cloud administrator that wants to build a cloud, but also for big companies that are interested in build cloud solutions out of uh, of Open Nebula. So we can see that is enabled hosting companies and telcos all over the world, like China Mobile, Telefonica, they are, uh, they are using Open Nebula for, for their own solutions and also for, for in-house um, managing. Um, some others are less uh, known, but uh, also big contributors to the Open Nebula community, like Alter Ways and VStorm. It's also uh, I enable f to companies that want to offer cloud solutions. So uh, we can see there um, people that uh, uses uh, Open Nebula to to offer cloud solutions to other to other clients. And also, uh, it enables service company to offer cloud uh, consulting and integration, like for instance, Logica, which is a technological partner of uh, C2F, I think, KPMG, well, lots of them. Uh, it's also a cloud enabled for building uh, virtualized uh, data centers. So there's um, big players in the industry that are using Open Nebula to offer their services. Most um, remarkable is the case of Wim, which is a big contributor um, of Open Nebula. Also, um, there's cases in, in e-government of uh, people that are thinking about uh, using Open Nebula, like for instance, um, in Florence, in, in Wyoming, even in my uh, in my hometown, they're thinking about using Open Nebula to, to manage the uh, the physical hardware in 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 government. Uh, it's also used by supercomputing centers like uh, Tesca, also um, also um, Sara, which is I think based in the Netherlands. And also, especially for research centers like CERN, which is a big uh, user and the one that provide the best feedback in, in scalability tests, the Fermilab, the ESA, or lots of um, of research centers that contribute and are active in the mailing lists. <laughs> okay, about European projects, uh, we participate in a number of uh, of them nowadays, like distributed computer infrastructures, like. For instance, Bonfire, which is a project to offer cloud computer to to scientific communities, and also some other research projects like Reservoir, which I just finished, but is uh, the one that originated uh, all the Open Nebula project, 
also a Stratus lab that is trying to bring together the worlds of grid and cloud and a number of others as well. Okay, so if that's uh, I think about it. This is the main page of Open Nebula. You can go there for further information if you want to and also to try it out if you are up to it. Now I'll be happy if you have any questions. Anyone? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.